to The Holy Way with Pastor Dr. S.O. Olagunju, the Senior Pastor of Bible Faith Holiness Church. Pastor Olagunju preaches the unadulterated Word of God according to 1 Peter 1.16, for it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Please sit back and enjoy the message. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. And verse 5. And the rest of the dead live for Live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So this, those who have rapture, have already rapture, and then those who have salvation during the great tribulation, we are still going, we are coming back after seven years of great tribulation to reign when Jesus died is 1,000 millennia and reign. So these are the people also that rapture because they are going to kill them because they refuse to take 666 on their forehead. If you are here now and you fail the first rapture, and then you miss the rapture. I, do, I wonder if we'll be able to escape the great tribulation. Because you do need the great tribulation, you will not allow to, unless you have C6 on your forehead or your the forearm, you will not be able to survive. But if you are really safe, you don't mind to die to make it to heaven. So that's why only those who refuse. And it's only those who receive salvation during the great tribulation that can do that. Because now you also say you are saved. But you don't serve the Lord. You still love yourself. You don't, you, still, you don't love Jesus. You are not ready. You are running away from death. So you are not actually saved. So, but for people that actually say, because the true church is already gone, because the, the life is not our own anymore. The life we are living, the life of Christ, our life is in heaven. And nobody can touch your life. Nobody can touch my life until Jesus comes, unless God allows it. So if you fail to rapture when before Jesus comes, when Jesus comes to take us, there's going to be great tribulation. And it's going to be difficult for you to live because the Antichrist will take control. Antichrist will ask you to have the mark on your forehead or your forehand. The, the, the forehand. If you refuse, they kill you. So if you are a true savage, child of God, you don't mind to die, then you are going to be those that are going to actually rapture again. So you have to understand that it's better for you now, it's better for me now to suffer for Christ than to go through great tribulation when the church is already gone and the Antichrist says, look, unless, do what is called church, you can go to church. There may be church during the great tribulation, but there is not the church of Christ because the true church of Christ is gone. So you have to follow the Antichrist, to obey the Antichrist. When you die, you just go to hell. And that's not the will of God for you. And not the will of God for me. You better be ready for the first rapture. When Jesus is coming, when we hear this, the sound of the trumpet, and we join. So those, this is the, 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 uh, the, the third rapture. During the Great Tribulation, many, many will be converted. And when they are converted, they will say no to Satan. They will not accept the, the six, six mark. And there, as, well, as a result, they will not be able to do any shopping. They can run. I don't know where we're going to hide, whether in the bush, but you cannot survive. And then when they kill you, you are coming to join the church in heaven. So this is the third rapture. Tribulation, rapture of the tribulation, combat. Those who are converted don't tribulation. And number four, the fourth one, the rapture or the two witnesses, the two witnesses they are called Enoch and Elijah. During the final week of the Great Tribulation, 
You can see that in Revelation chapter 11, uh, from verse 3 to 12, you know, the rapture of the two witnesses. Because after they have killed those who receive salvation, don't need the great revelation. Now, God is going to send Elijah and Enoch. Remember, Enoch and Elijah, they took their physical body to heaven. So they had to die. Again, because Jesus died before the, you know, he was buried. All the believers also will die before after resurrection. We will have our new body. But Elijah and, he, and the Enoch, they were taken to heaven like that. So they have to come as you know, prophet to terrorize the you know, Antichrist. So during the final week of the Great Tribulation, this is what is going to happen. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3 to 12. You go and read that. So they are going to, they did everything now, and then they tried to kill them. They couldn't kill them. But the whole world were afraid of them. The whole world can see them everywhere because they terrorize and deal with Antichrist. But eventually they kill them. And when they kill them, so they see them on the, on the street. They were afraid because they say they are going to rise up again. So what happened? The whole, the whole world were rejoicing. You can see it on the television. All these people are dead. But after three days, they got up again and they were raptured to heaven. That is the last rapture. So, so we will never understand the Bible concerning God's end time true unless we realize certain basic fact. There are two future comings of Jesus. The future coming of Jesus. Okay. Okay. There are two future comings of Jesus. That's how to understand what is going on. So the, the rapture, that's the force. Jesus is coming for his church. That is the first coming of our Lord Jesus. You know, that's why you are expecting the coming of your Lord. It will come. That's the first coming. The first coming, Jesus is coming for his church. And the second, the second one, the return of Christ. Jesus is coming back with the saint to the earth. Seven years later, after the great tribulation, Jesus is coming. You know, but now what happened is when Jesus <clears throat> we was taken to heaven, Jesus is coming for his church to take me and to take you to heaven. And we are within in heaven. The return of Christ is coming back with his saint. That is the second coming of our Lord Jesus. First of all, we met him in the, in the air and we are taken to heaven. After seven years, now we are coming together to reign with him. See what um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51, we just read it. 1 Corinthians 15. Praise the Lord. God will get you ready and get me ready for the coming of the Lord, because this world is not our home. We are only passing by. First Corinthians chapter 15, uh, 51 to 54. This is coming to take us, 51 to 54. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all change. Not everybody will die before. We shall all change. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the trump, <clears throat> at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Our body will be changed. You know, immortal body will become, immortal body become immortal. For this corruptible should put on incorruption, and this mortal must, be, must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall we brought, shall be brought to pass. The saying that is written, death is swallowed 
in victory. You cannot die anymore. So at the rapture, Jesus does not return to the earth. That's what happened during rapture. He was in the air. He took the, 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 his bride to heaven. Nobody see. Maybe we, when we are sleeping, if something will just happen. Or when we are driving, we just disappear. Nobody will see Jesus. But the second time, when it's coming, the second, all of us are coming. The eyes will see. So at the rapture, <clears throat> at the rapture, Jesus does not return to the earth. He appears personally in the air to mean the saint. You are among the saints. When you are saved, it's not when you die you become a saint. Catholic says every believer is called a saint. Closing <clears throat> meet the saint. Closing the church age before the great tribulation begins. Or not. So before the judgment of God, the church is already taken. So the second, <clears throat> the second coming takes place seven years later at the end of the great tribulation. When that period, when King Jesus, our Lord, comes back to the earth with his saints, we are the saints, to set up his 1,000 years uh, kingdom on earth. You see that? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 6, 16 to 17. It's coming to reign. Now, the day we are, when we are born again, we are already born into the kingdom of God. The church is the kingdom of God, literally, spiritually. But literally, we are coming because every believer is a king. The day you are born again, you have a king with a crown on your head. And then we are coming. First of all, we go to Jesus. We have a, you know, um, uh, wedding ceremony in heaven, and after that we are coming here on earth, and then we're going to set up in glory. We are coming together. So, at the second, at the sound of the trumpet, the graves will burst open, and the dead saints will be raised, and we receive glorified resurrection, resurrection body. That's what happened when we are talking here. We are talking about the the rapture. Resurrection body will be given to you, given to me, and will be reunited with our, you know, our respective spirit and soul, we join. And we meet the Lord in the air. Your spirit and soul will come, my spirit and soul will come into my body. If I die before Jesus comes, and he's going to be glorified, and I will join. That is what we call rapture. <clears throat> now, all living believers in Christ will be instantly transformed and receive a glorified body in the likeness of Jesus, resurrection body. So we have resurrection body. You have that in your mind. The rapture we are talking about is going to give you resurrection body as the same body of Jesus. People will recognize you, but your body is, you know, you can go. No, no object can stop you from going. You don't need any car. You don't need any, any, any bicycle. You know, because if you want to go to, I mean, the America now, you are just in a second. You are there, because you have another body. Then we will be caught up together with the resurrected saint to be with Jesus Christ in heaven. So shall we ever be with the Lord? What comfort? What hope in this world? You know, whatever trouble you are going through, whatever problem you are going through, whatever fear, everything will disappear in, in the twinkling of an eye when your Lord comes to take you. And then we are going to be with him for, for forever. Can you imagine the global impact of this event? When this rapture takes place, what is going to, is going to happen? Appear? affect the whole world. Suddenly, millions of people will disappear. Millions of people will disappear from this planet. <clears throat> this will be the people from all walks of life. Every, all the nations of the world, whether they are children of God, the believer, the saint, those are expecting the coming of their Lord. Pilots will instantly disappear from their plane. Millions of people will suddenly disappear from behind the wheel in their car disappear 
from the passenger seat in their cars as they are changed in the twinkling of an eye. So that is what we're expecting, brothers and sisters. You may be sleeping, you disappear. If the time comes, the owner is coming to take you and take me in the twinkling of an eye. We I pray that you will not miss that and I will not miss that. And every single child below the age of accountability will go in the rapture. Oh, yes. Even babies of unsafe parents. So children, they are born in sin. They are committing sin. Is the spirit of sin inside them. They are innocent. They, are, they don't know what they are doing. So when rapture comes, they are the one that will go first. They are not, they say they are not saved. Mm -hmm, it's true because it's saying they are committing, they are inherited that. They can be biting you, they can be, they can even kill people because of, it's the Satan inside them. But they don't know. But when they get to the age of accountability, they don't give their life to Christ. They will not rapture. Only those the children, they will rapture. Their parents may not be Christian, they may not be saved, but the children will disappear. You'll be surprised if you are a, not a child of God. And you have a baby or have children, children in your home under the age of accountability if Jesus come, because Jesus has sent them into the world, though they might not receive Christ yet, but because they are ignorant. So they will disappear before you. That is why you have to give your life to Christ and live the life of expectation of the coming of your Lord to take you home, you know, because your children will disappear. And they go to heaven and you will go to hell. So that's why it's important to know that the Lord is coming to take his own to heaven. It, to take his own, he died for you, he died for me, he died for everybody. And if you receive him, then you're going to remain with him and will not reject you. He will keep you by the power of this Holy Spirit. He will increase his grace on you to make you to remain not to go back because see that lays hand on this plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. The believer's glorified body. You see the, bo the glorified body, you have the glorified body, like the body of our Lord Jesus. You know, characteristic of the believer's glorified body. Five characteristics of the believer's glorified body. The body you are going to have and the body I'm going to have is a body that is identical. Praise the Lord. Is a body that is identical with him of the Lord Jesus. So you want your body to be, because Jesus is in glory now, that body is going to be exactly like the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing, the body that is a material flesh and bone, flesh and bone body without blood, a tangible body, not a ghost. You will not be a ghost. You know, you have bone, you have flesh, but no blood. Just like Jesus has bone, he has flesh. You know, remember, when after his resurrection, he appeared to his disciples. They were afraid. They thought he was a ghost. He said, oh, not a ghost. Go and bring food and eat it. He said, a ghost cannot eat. So Jesus came with his bone, with the flesh, but no blood. He came to the world first to have blood, to be shed that blood for you, to die for me and to die for you. Without, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. That's why. But now, it doesn't need blood. You don't need blood. Your body doesn't need, glorified body doesn't need blood. But you still have bone. You still have flesh because you have put on your natural body. But it's glorified body. It's now glorified body. Praise the Lord. So that's what is going to happen. We're going to be exactly like him. A body which is incorruptible and immortal. Immortal can never die. Can never die. That's the body you're going to have. That's the body I'm going to have. A body that is glorious and suitable for living condition in heaven. The living condition in heaven. Because only the same body, identical body can live in heaven. You can't have strange body in heaven. The body of people in heaven are glorified body. You know, so you have the same body. That's what the body you are going to have. And then number five, a body where our personal identity will be preserved. When Jesus, <clears throat> you know, when Jesus rose from the dead, he did not lose any of identity. You know, so you can say first John chapter three, two and uh, three say. We have appeared. Love is appearing. We want to see him, know him as he is. 
Jesus is the same, but his body is glorified, but you are going to recognize him. So you are going to recognize me, I'm going to recognize you, though we have glorified body. The body that can never die again. 4 John chapter 3. 4 John chapter 3, verses 2 and um, uh, 3. 4 John chapter, chapter 3, 2 and 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear. What shall we be? But we know that when he shall appear, when our Lord shall appear, we shall be like him. Praise the Lord. For we shall see him as he is. As he is. You will know this is Jesus. You recognize him. And verse 3. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. He is pure. If you want to be like him, you want to see him as he is, he sees you now, but you don't see him, I don't see him, but I want to see him. So when I'm raptured, when I jump, I'm going to be exactly, my body is going to be like a body. People will recognize me as the same, but my glorified body. So if you have that hope in you, you have to live, you have to make sure you are saved, you have to make sure that Jesus is inside you through by his only spirit, to change you, to transform you. Remember, we are in him and he's in us. The purpose is to transform us, to make us ready for this glorified body, to give us the glory because it's the hope of our glory. It's, it's coming. You can see the sign of it. It's, it's coming now because it's right. It's coming, it's right. You know, it's coming, it's imminent, maybe tonight. Be ready so that he has prepared another body for you. He has prepared the body. So you have to... Trade your old, this your present body with a wonderful body, with a mortal body, with glory, glorified body, with body that has no pain. The body can, can never get hold. So that is the body Jesus is going to give to you. He's going to give to me. Don't let Satan rob you of what Jesus is doing for you now. He has done it and has continued to do it because he's still interceding for us so that we will not fall off, we will not fall away. It's Jesus is coming. The end is coming. The judgment of God is coming upon people that refuse to accept him. Since you have accepted Christ, you are accepted, you are inside him, and it's inside you to transform you, to make you to be like him. Is the hope of your glory. Is the hope of the believer's glory. Is the hope of the saint's glory. So it's my hope. So don't let that hope disappear. Remain in him. Abide in him. Jesus said, if you remain in me, if you abide in me, no, and my word abide in you. So the Father will give you whatever you want. Don't let anything discourage you. Don't let anything take you. Don't let problem or sickness or money, nothing take you out of him. Because the life you are living is ephemeral. It's going to disappear very soon. Temporal. But what we're talking about, you know, everlasting life. Where are you going to spend your everlasting life? Still going to whether hell or with God. Where are you going to spend your eternity? If you are here, fire is forever. Lake of fire is forever. Living with God in heaven is forever. And we are still coming to reign. And we are still going to have the new Jerusalem. That is our home that Jesus is going to prepare for us. The Lord will bless you as you have this message. Now be ready because the end is here. Jesus is coming at any moment, but only people that love is appearing, only people that are really saved, only people that belong to him, only people that fear him, only people that obey him, only people that do his will are the one that is coming for. Remember the day you are born again, I've given you the garment. He say now that garment <clears throat> must not be polluted, you know, must not be stained with any sin at all. I'm coming for a church that has no spot, no wrinkle, no remedy, no blemish. If there is stain, any form of sin, this form is stain. If you don't repent, you don't repent, the stain is going to die and going to reject you. I pray that we will not reject you. You will not reject me. So let the Holy Spirit help you all the time. Holy Spirit, help me. Don't let me come in sin. We want to walk in the, in the spirit, not in the flesh, because our flesh will make us to fall. God will bless you. God will make you to be ready for the coming of the Lord. When Jesus comes, you will not miss him. He will not reject you. He will not say, I don't know you, you workers of iniquity, because he died for you. 
and he wants you to come to take you to himself so that where he is, you will be forever. You'll be in glory forever. You'll live with him forever. God will make it possible. Whatever you need physically is going to provide for you. You need a good job, it will give you a good job. You will need healing in your body. Remember, he's our healer. He said, I am the Lord of Faker, the Lord that healed. I am the great physician. Trust him, believe him. Remember that your life is not yours anymore. Your life is in heaven. Jesus is inside you, and your body is the temple of God. Ask him to heal the temple. Is the landlord of the body of the house. Tell him to heal you, whether in your head, in your tummy, in your body, in your tell him, believe in him. If you believe, all things are possible. He's here to heal you, to heal your spirit, soul, and body. I'm sending the word of healing to you. I send my word and heal it, heal it. I send you a word and it blesses you. So the word of God blesses, the word of God heals, the word of God delivers, the word of God is the power that the Holy Spirit is using. Then receive joy through the truth that you have. The word of God is truth. And give you that truth. Jesus is the truth. The truth has set you free from fear, from doubt, from whatever is not of God in your life. You will live a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, a life of heaven. And when Jesus comes, you will not miss him. I will not miss him. We're going to see. We're going to embrace ourselves when we get to heaven. The Lord bless you mightily. I pray whatever you need, God has already given to you by faith. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching today's message with Senior Pastor Dr. Esso Olaginju. We trust that you have been blessed. If after hearing today's message, you want to give your life to Christ, Please repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I confess and forsake my sins and surrender my life to you today. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I declare that I am born again. For more information, please visit our website at BibleFaithHolinessChurch.org or call us on 0208 5390886 or visit us at Bible Faith Holiness Church 70 Grange Park Road Leighton London E10